All righty. Can folks see my screen okay? Great. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about the Genomic Data Science Community Network. Um, this is an effort that's organized by um, folks at Hopkins and the Fred Hutch Cancer Center. Um, this is an effort that's been going on, I think, since around 2020. Um, so uh, we've uh, been meeting together with the network for a couple of years, um, and they're really excited about some of the work that we're doing. So um, there are some exercises that we've used that uh, leverage Galaxy on Anvil, and a lot of our network members, like Mike was describing um, at PAG, love Galaxy for education. Um, so I think this is kind of another venue that we can um, use for uh, genomic data science education. Uh, so a little bit of the background, as I'm sure this group is well aware, uh, the amount of genomics data that's been collected is um, already massive and then massively growing. And I think this provides a lot of opportunities as well as needs to analyze the data. Um, and there's a lot that can be learned from it. Uh, so I think that uh, this is definitely uh, an important area of research and one where um, a lot of uh, folks who are kind of new to genomics and genomic data science can get involved. Um, but I think that uh, there are a lot of barriers and disparities that kind of exist in this space. A lot of institutions um, lack their resources uh, to uh, set up uh, computing centers uh, and uh, places where they can just house all of the data, um, uh, especially institutions that are more under-resourced. Um, and there isn't as much uh, then outreach to students who attend some of these uh, institutions um, to access education um, that can kind of even expose them to genomic data science. Uh, so relative to kind of the whole population, um, students from uh, kind of minority groups are um, matriculating at a lower rate uh, for bachelor's degrees in biological data science. And so there's this gap here uh, with, uh, you know, lots and lots of opportunity, um, but uh, really limited access. So this has motivated the creation of the Genomic Data Science Community Network. Uh, so, so far, this is um, about 26 members from um, underserved institutions across the United States. Uh, so these are faculty and educators at historically black colleges and universities, uh, Hispanic serving institutions, tribal colleges and universities, uh, community colleges um, with a focus on undergraduate students. Um, so we have, uh, I think a pretty fair representation, uh, geographic distribution across the US um, representing 18 states, um, Puerto Rico and Washington, DC. Um, and it's been really exciting to uh, meet these network members, learn about their research interests, um, learn about the kind of education that uh, they're really excited about. Um, and together with this network, uh, the goal is to help to connect these faculty members to one another. Um, they have a lot of rich information on uh, the kind of institutions and systems um, that they're uh, within um, and have really great knowledge of how to do um, education in a way that's really exciting to these students. Um, so uh, helping them to create these um, connections uh, across institutions, um, as well as expanding access to resources and data. Um, one of those barriers, of course, is um, access to data, uh, but then also access to um, resources like um, uh, the computing centers. And so this is kind of a place where Anvil can fit in to uh, help uh, grant students and uh, educators access to um, these sorts of resources that their institutions don't uh, really have the capacity to create and support for them. Um, and at the Hopkins group um, in Jeff Leake's uh, group, which is now at uh, the Hutch, um, they're really uh, incredible at developing these educational resources that are um, scalable and modular. Um, so one of our goals has been to create uh, educational content that the faculty and members and educators in the network can kind of plug into their courses um, that can be really exciting for students um, and help to kind of expose them and pique their interest in the field. Uh, so uh, earlier, 
I guess, middle of last year, we published a manuscript about um, all of our efforts and um, a lot of the ways that we've identified and learned um, from the network members what is needed to um, help to kind of over time through accessing students and um, educating them um, to, device, to diversify the research community uh, in the field of genomic data science. So um, there's a lot of really good information um, in this manuscript and you can access that in the link here. Um, and one of the kind of main ideas in order for us to kind of get to this point where we're really supporting students um, is to really uh, leverage the resources that are um, available at R1 institutions, um, connect with stakeholders at underrepresented institutions like the administrators and funders in order to support faculty who have this really rich knowledge um, about education to support them in supporting students. Um, so this involves recognizing the strengths that they have um, at their respective institutions. Um, a lot of this uh, is around kind of belonging and involvement. People get really excited um, and have really strong networks um, at underrepresented institutions. And then part of this involves also sharing resources and being able to collaborate um, kind of across the board, across institutions. Um, to develop resources that we can share. So within our uh, group, within the network, we've met, uh, I think, four or five times virtually and um, had our first in-person meeting um, at the end of uh, the summer last year. Um, and a lot of our efforts have been uh, initially kind of building up this community, um, building up those connections and collaborations. Uh, and last year, uh, we worked on setting up some working groups to let uh, the network members really take uh, the network in the direction that is most exciting to them. So uh, there are a number of members who are really interested in um, microbiome research and education, um, some that are really interested in developing a curriculum, and then some who are parts of uh, community colleges and interested in um, finding ways to bring uh, genomic data science education. Uh, in uh, the community college uh, space. Uh, so then for the rest of the presentation, I'm gonna focus on a little bit about our uh, educational resources. Um, this has been something that uh, is really exciting to build. We've been able to um, leverage some of the uh, courses that some of our um, network members have created and adapt them uh, to run on Galaxy and Anvil um, and are kind of creating this system where this is something that we can uh, do scalably um, to create create fair uh, educational content, uh, which is, I know, a really important goal in Galaxy. Uh, so the content developers in our group have um, developed some educational infrastructure that supports this work uh, being done in a scalable way. One is um, Otter or open source tools for training resources. Uh, so this uh, is uh, a resource that um, can create courses uh, from uh, Markdown files. Uh, and these can be published in Bookdown, which is the primary format that we use, um, but then also can be published on WeamPub and Coursera. So. Um, if uh, educators are interested, uh, they can create kind of a lean pub course to direct their students to um, as they go through the materials. Um, and another uh, really cool piece of uh, infrastructure is this Mario package that's been created that can uh, render uh, videos with kind of an automated voice uh, from Google Slides. So it can uh, kind of take the slides, uh, run them in order, and then the speaker notes will be converted to kind of an automated uh, spoken text. And that way we can quickly create these videos, um, but uh, also easily kind of update and adapt them as uh, Anvil uh, and Galaxy on Anvil might kind of adapt and change and things might look a little different. So it makes it a little, a bit quicker to create a new video when, when there might be just kind of one slide or one piece to update. So um, I'll just highlight a couple of the activities we've created. One is this um, SARS variant detection activity. 
uh, using Galaxy on Anvil. Uh, so it's uh, a great activity because uh, students have all heard about COVID, um, understand the importance to society. Um, and this is something that, you know, maybe they've heard about, but haven't really had the exposure to understand a little bit about how to understand the different variants. Um, so this activity uh, is a really big uh, kind of topic and help uh, pique their interest. Uh, and then it also introduces students to some of these uh, essential uh, kind of skills and analyses in genomics and exposing them to some of these um, concepts that can be more broadly applied beyond this one application. And then also introduces them to um, genomic data science and um, using uh, the cloud for computation. Uh, so just a quick overview of this workflow. Um, students will get signed into Anvil and launch Galaxy. They will run FastQC to check the data quality. Um, these are SARS uh, viral sequences. So um, you, know, you can pull in any sequence uh, in this activity, but one is provided. Um, align, the, um, uh, align the reads uh, to create the um, viral sequence and then uh, visualize the sequence using JBrowse um, so students can see um, what it exactly looks like when you're looking for a variant and can do a little bit of that exploration manually. Um, and it helps students to understand kind of these real life questions. They've you know, heard about a couple of different variants, so it gets them to concretely understand um, some of these things and um, hopefully kind of get them interested in other applications for genomic data science. The activity also includes some lecture videos, so introducing students to variation, uh, sequencing, alignment, uh, genomic data structures, and cloud computing. And there's also this uh, pre-lab lecture video that walks students through everything that's going to be done. So um, the goal is to create something that uh, educators can use, but this is also that something that can be kind of done individually um, as an activity by students and um, can be reused in, in different settings. Um, another kind of more advanced uh, set of books that we've created is based on the statistics for genomics course. Um, so this goes into some more advanced concept and, uh, concepts into kind of more programming uh, skills. Uh, so these cover topics like differential expression, uh, RNA sequencing, sig single cell RNA sequencing, uh, and PCA. And this uh, is in Bioconductor using uh, using Bioconductor in RStudio. Uh, and then up next, we're kind of polishing up the statistics for genomics and then also creating a course um, about uh, epigenetics. Uh, so some of the feedback that we also heard from the network is that uh, it can be really challenging for instructors to kind of find these materials and uh, learn and kind of be really prepared for uh, implementing them in the classroom. So we hosted a train the trainer activity um, that walked through the whole uh, exercise and um, kind of showed them exactly how it might look like to run it in their classroom. Uh, and we're really encouraging um, and kind of hoping to support the network members in um, plugging this into their classes and actually uh, running the activity. So we're uh, kind of making ourselves uh, available through uh, the office, uh, the Anvil um, kind of outreach working group. We have a discourse forum uh, like Galaxy does. Um, and then we also are kind of opening up the office hours um, and providing TA support to them um, while they can uh, test out the activities. So I'm going to stop there. Um, I am really, really excited about a lot of the work that the GDSCN has done. Um, again, if you want to read more about that in some of the other uh, lessons learned, you can check out the link to the paper here. Um, I think the slides are linked in the agenda. Um, but yeah, thanks, and I'm happy to take any questions.
I see your comment in the chat, Bjorn, about um, creating a blog post. Yeah, I think this would be a great thing to share more widely. Yeah, I, yeah, it, it's great. I didn't know about that. And I think we should just link it out into various other initiatives and, and say, hey, this is also used to actually teach and, and train students on that. Um, Natalie, I have a second question. Um, so the the first um so your network these gdscn is there an opportunity to to give um talks so berenice and um berenice students they have created wastewater um workflows wastewater detection workflows and two other microbiome um workflows and they're searching kind of for a venue to present that work um and maybe that would fit i mean you also do in this network a lot of microbiome data analysis is that correct yeah we have a lot of members who are really interested in uh, microbiome research and education so we have a a working group that's working on collecting various educational materials uh specifically with microbiome for kind of the mm -hmm. undergraduate level so i think that would be a really great place to get connected um yeah I can okay. make that connection. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think that would be a, that would be a perfect fit. Thank you for uh, for sharing that, Dor. Cool. Uh, just and then just to sort of prompt discussion, um, the Mario stuff's like really cool, right? You get like a slide deck with just notes, and then it'll automatically render it into videos. Um, I don't love the the uh, automatic voices you know, the automatic reading, but it's like pretty good. And the nice part is that, you know, there's an index. So if I just need to watch, you know, a snippet of like where, you know, under which of these 50 menus is this thing hidden, you know, having a video is useful because then you can actually watch it sort of play out. So, you know, that technology, you know, kind of renders from Google Slides today and maybe Markdown, I'm, I'm not totally sure. I was wondering if we have anything equivalent from like the GTN, or if you know if it makes sense to open up a discussion about how we could have that. Having just gone through this training at PAG, where we're talking about how to launch this like very complicated workflow and there's like a million steps involved, it, it would just be so wonderful if we had um, some videos that were like you know nicely organized. Where if you you know if you just needed to get you know the 10 second version or the 10 minute version or the 10 hour version, you know we could do that on the fly. I'm just wondering what's available. I, I know James had been working on some stuff a couple of years ago, um, and that was at the same time uh, Helena was working on um, automatic uh, slide and video generation for all the GTN stuff. Um, I don't see her on the call, um, but yeah, I know there's interest. And this was the one thing that I was going to ask about. Is there a way to, you know, merge the two efforts somehow or, you know? I, I bet there's a way to... Um, to really complement each other complement them i don't you know yeah. It's, yeah. Probably, it's, it's not going to be a five minute job but you know now that they've gone through all this work to kind of bundle it and sort through the issues i bet there's a lot of lessons we could learn from them where it'll still be work on us but um it, it would just be so wonderful if we could take you know some of the gtn resources and have these videos automatically generated so the gtn slides are automatically um, put on on youtube so you have these slides and you have the um the presenter comments and the comments are then put into yeah an automatic generated voice and and to my understanding um they are then uploaded to youtube so every slide should have a attached youtube video from gtn okay i mean i guess that's uh very comparable to what's available through the Mario. Can you like script, um, uh, you know, kind of inter interacting with the Galaxy UI in that way, or is that sort of beyond what's available? Um, um, we kind of can, right? We, so we have tours and this was one of, the, one of the places we wanted tours to go eventually was yeah. you have a whole analysis that's executed in front of you that you could talk over or, or whatever. Um, it's sort of what what we want to whatever we want to build it into though i see i see so maybe maybe that's the right technology i should be talking i should be thinking about because you know some parts it's like you know click on this menu go here then go to this text box and enter this and then 
you know, watch it run and then click here to kind of view the results. It's, there's sort of, um, the, you know, kind of the more abstract parts can be presented through static slides, but I think it is useful to be able to see in the UI, like exactly where to go and what to do. And I'm trying to find Helena's repo. Um... There's a training how to add auto-generated videos to your slides, so I, I linked it in the chat. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll, I'll review that. Yeah, this is an, I mean, Helena and, and the GTN folks put a lot of effort to make that really, really smooth for contributors as well. Oh, cool. Um, so that's actually, I mean, that's an amazing um, technology. And they are using Poly, I think, yeah. um, from, from Amazon. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, Mario uses something very similar. Um, I forget what it is on the back end. Oh, this is cool. This is so cool. So Natalie, I think um, yeah, just joining one of the GTN um, calls or or maybe directly get in contact um, on the GTN channel. Um, I I already pinged um, Helena to to point her to to Mario. So yeah, maybe we can learn from each other. Yeah, yeah definitely. I'd love to see that. I mean, I mean, maybe you know, maybe they're so different that you know they don't need to be fully integrated. But it'd be nice to compare notes and see if I'm sure there are lessons learned in both directions. Should we mirror, do you have, um, so the lessons that you have for, I'm going to botch the acronym. Um, the, yeah. Um, are those on the GTN too, or is that content we could mirror they're, and they're starting to, okay. Um, there, you know, there are kind of the first couple, uh, GTN tutorials that has sort of the, the base information. It's honestly, it's been in flux quite rapidly recently. So we have some catching up to do to make sure that the tutorial matches the kind of ver the current versions. Um, and then where it gets, in my mind where it gets tricky is it's like, it's many levels. It's like, there's the scientific goal of like getting these amazing genomes and doing comparative genomics. But then there's kind of the nuts and bolts about like how you can, you know, interact with histories, extract workflows, you know, um, you know, uh, make sure that you're, you know, you can pull data from buckets. You can write data to, you know, other places. There's like, there's so many levels upon levels that that you would really need to um, uh, to go through. So it's it's hard to do it all in like all in one event. <laughs> it's like you can either focus on the science or you can focus on the nuts and bolts. But trying to do everything is like overwhelming at times. Fortunately, our audience uh, was mostly quite comfortable with Galaxy. So you know, there on purpose we focused mostly on the science, but. I was just sort of thinking it would be helpful to, to have resources at both levels. Mm -hmm. I have a question in this direction. If if we have tours actually working for all these um, tutorials, is a video in addition actually needed or is tools actually the the preferable way instead of a video? I think you would do it for different types of content. If it's strictly interacting with the UI, probably the tour. But if you want to sort of interact with the UI and then, you know, interleave a scientific discussion, <laughs> you kind of want a video. Yeah, and I think videos uh, can be shared at different resources and linked differently. And so there will be always an advantage for that while the tours yeah you have to be active on the ui to to run them i mean if you can run a tour though you can record a video of it so it's not like we have to pick one right. or the other absolutely yeah i guess you would just record the tour and then take that content and you know edit the video and cut in your other chunks or things like that yeah I honestly don't know how to do this. So, I, you know, I, I'd really appreciate input, but, um, you know, in other events, um, you know, you'll kind of, well, like I did an event with Natalie where like we're, we're interacting in the UI, we're like doing live analysis. Then we flip over to side to, to static slides to provide kind of a more scientific context and then flip back to the, to the UI. That works okay to a point. <laughs> But I feel like people get exhausted if it's you flip back and forth too many times, you know. 
or if they're trying to follow along and yeah. get get a little bit behind, then you're yep. closed. Yep. yep. I mean, that's the, the beauty of a video, because if you get lost, you just go back and you can no big deal. Yep. I don't, I don't know. Have other people, um, you know, given these types of trainings? I'm, I'm curious if people have any sort of strategies that they really like, or maybe a strategy they tried and they, they didn't like. That's also useful information. <laughs> I can only second that it's a challenge. Uh, I am thinking back to my trainings, uh, which are more on the dev side of, Gal of galaxy and that adds a third variable which is the shell or the the, the editor uh, whether it's an ide or vim or whatever so you jump between the slides which give you the concept you jump between that and the ui where you operate galaxy and then there is the editor when you do where you do the actual uh core of the <laughs> dev tutorial and that's a challenge and whether it's virtual or like last uh, conference we did it in person uh, the challenges are the same and sorry I haven't found any way around it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean some of this complexity is you know is really intrinsic and um, you know we can we can try to hide it we can try to dress it up but you know some of these things are just really involved and you have to get your your hands dirty I don't know, does anyone else have any um, either positive or negative experiences they wanted to, to share? I, I'm really, really genuinely interested in, in ideas here. Galaxy Studio, what's that? It's what I think you're describing. We want to have different windows and portals into the application all in sync with each other. Yeah. So if you go to like, you know our studio right there's different windows that that oh i see you're saying parts yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Gen Gen jennifer is right like uh, <laughs> uh i i was about to say split screen is the only thing which a split screen is the only thing which makes it slightly more more uh, palatable yeah um have people seen any really effective, I, I was thinking about this um, a little bit on the flight home and it felt a little bit like uh, trying to learn, I don't know, like Photoshop or Illustrator, some other you know piece of software that has like a very complicated and sophisticated UI. I personally hate Photoshop. I've been unsuccessfully trying to use it for 20 years. Sometimes it's necessary. The problem is I don't use it often enough. I like learn how to do something and then a year later I try to go back and do it and I've like totally forgotten everything. Um, but I'm wondering if are there other examples that you really that other, maybe from other scientific software packages or maybe not even scientific, just other software packages. You know, is there something out there that people really like that it, that have been effective? Um, so this may or may not be relevant. I I taught uh, Photoshop. Uh, um, over the course of I don't know five years at yeah. my previous university job, and uh, my students were not how should I put it the brightest, <laughs> uh, and Linda tutorials were the most helpful for them. Lin Linda, it's a, let me see, it's a, it's a portal which has thousands and thousands of tutorials on all imaginable software yeah. packages. Adobe included so and they were these they would have let me see they would have uh collections of uh, they would have a sequence of short videos describing a feature of Photoshop and the the total sequence would be say three and a half hours uh but they would be split up into videos of three four five six minutes long and those would be uh, walkthrough videos. It would be not uh, a headshot of a person. It would be the actual yeah. uh, UI of the software and the 
the, the, the narrator would be very slowly describing and clicking and showing what's happening on the screen. So what, what, what was helpful to my uh, students was that they would get this uh, huge, overwhelmingly complex topic, but it would be split up into meaningful chunks of roughly five minutes long. So they could uh, pick and choose and then go back to what they did not understand. Uh, and needless to say, the assignment was never watch these and learn these three hours of videos, but the assignment would be learn this and this and this and this technique. And here yeah. is the three hours for context, but these five videos are what you need to wow. figure out how to do this. So this, the, the ability to go back to exactly that part uh, so that was that's something I found to be much, much more um, usable than the, say, Coursera um, uh, transcripts, where you can go to a certain part, but it's not as explicit as when you have an actual table of contents, which is split into three or four minute chunks. I like that. So, you know, you know, divide up, I don't know, whatever it is, two hours of content into five minute chunks so that you can... You know, the nice part is, is you get, you know, just the table of contents becomes the overview of, oh, yeah, these are the 20 things you need to do. You know, you know we'll walk you through each one in five minute intervals. You know, five minutes is like a digestible amount of content that you can kind of um, understand it and, and um, kind of work through it. Yeah, I think that I think that's a really good um, framework that could be effective. It, I, I just totally got the sense that, you know, some people were like really trying to keep pay attention and follow along and, and they got lost and they got frustrated. So we're trying to get ahead of that. Plus then those little snippets are easy to share online so that if someone wanted to do this, they could, they could do it asynchronously when they had, had the chance. So lynda.com now uh, redirects to LinkedIn learning. <laughs> so I guess uh, LinkedIn, AKA Microsoft bought them out, but I'll check that out. Does anyone else have any um, have any favorites of, of other sites that they really like that have been successful? Kind of different, but for bioinformatics software, I like the Syrah vignettes they do, where they have a series of, I think they get to like PCA analysis or come on to like single cell RNA attack seek. And it's like very focused direct R code and explaining why you do it that way. Is that, built, is that built out of um, a bioconductor, or I guess our, our vignette, or or is there technology on top of that? I believe it's built out of an R vignette. Ah, okay. If I recall. It's been a little while since I've done them. I remember when I was learning it, it was, it was nice because it was super focused, super narrow scope. It's yeah. sort of like a little similar to how we do some of our tutorials for the bioinformatics, except rather than like the entirety of a single cell RNA seq run, it's just like one really narrow yeah. focus on it that you can kind of dive into. And it's like, here's the exact code and what's happening and why you're doing it. And like the plots that we're getting out of, it's a quick way to learn through and go through it. Cool. Yeah, I guess we should, that's a good uh, reminder. Um, you know, a lot of the bioconductor packages have like really nice vignettes that I've used those all the time that you know, they walk you through an example analysis, you know, really step by step. And then from that, you can kind of really understand um, and uh, follow along. Um, I'd be curious to know, uh, and I don't know if this falls into the same um, category, but has there ever been any discussion um, among the group of doing like a Coursera or Udemy um, for some of the basic Galaxy? Dan's nodding his head. Okay, go ahead. Well it wasn't galaxy specific, but there was a, a JHU bio, is it biostat? Uh, whatever. There, yeah. James did a course with a whole series of stuff that used galaxy and, and things like that. And, and I mean, that was enormously successful, or, and it is enormously successful. Like millions of students have gone through that. It's, it was, it was part of the genomic data science That's course it. sequence on Coursera. It was one of the, I believe, eight courses. And uh, I'm a, I suppose it got out of um, out of sync. It got outdated very fast. My guess, uh, keeping a Coursera course uh, up to date uh, is a challenge. Uh, most of those courses in those uh, genomic data science sequence, uh, which 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 is uh, which was put together by John by Johns Hopkins, most of them are quite old, uh, but some of them hold up. <coughs> Galaxy would never. <coughs> Excuse me. Galaxy would never um, last for. Sorry, 
I always like keeping it more than two yeah. years, it would be a challenge. So it would need to be constantly updated. Well, that's why I think we, you know, some sort of automatic rendering system would be ideal. Cause then, um, you know, the parts that are, you know, kind of the same API calls, same entry points that would work. And then you could incrementally update just the parts that needed to be updated, but it would always be rendered live. Um, but I, yeah. but I understand, I mean, that's like, <laughs> It's uh, that's, that's that's no small task um, to get there, but maybe and with, something to aspire towards. With Coursera or, or Udemy or something like that, you have to keep it up to date because the uh, the consequences are severe. Like uh, the Galaxy course was the lowest rated one among all the eight, and it was like the difference was significant. I don't mean statistically, but you could see it. It was. Uh, three something stars versus 4.9 something stars for the rest. Why? Only because it was outdated and eventually yeah. they took it off. Yeah. Yeah. I think with that one, we had some issues with the cloud resources too. Yeah. Um, I remember people starting instances and maybe not knowing how to shut them down, that oh. kind of thing. Oh, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so that was rough didn't specify properly that the instances had to be shut down after the course was run, I think, something yeah. like that. Or that you paid for them. Yep. Also, I'm wondering if it's possible to come up either with a Galaxy course in one of the universities that we're in or a bioinformatics course that uses Galaxy as a tool for all the chapters, if you will. I mean, the, the like uh, online course is better because there's a bigger audience, but maybe we can start from Penn State, Hopkins, Freiburg, somewhere with some course and then build on that. I don't know if that's, a, it probably has to be like, a, I don't know, a 500 level course, something, because, you know, it's not a basic science or anything that we want to teach, but it's more the tool. So Galaxy is used a lot in teaching. If you use a TIAS at the TIAS stats, it's amazing in how many courses Galaxy is used for teaching um, all kinds of different students. So if you're interested in that, I just recommend look up the TIA stats and, and you can get access to the EU one if you like, but this is really impressive how many people do that. And here in Freiburg, we have also um, week long courses that we offer for our students. So if you're interested, um, get in touch, but we, we more or less use GTN material all the way down and offer a variety um, to our students. <clears throat> yeah, thanks for that. And thank you, Bjorn. We ended up using that, exactly that service in EU for the VGP. Things are just a little bit uh, in flux in, on Maine here in the United States. So that, um, that, was, that was a platform we directed everyone to. That was super stable. That worked out uh, spectacularly. Hey, happy to provide that. It's super cool to see that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, if if Kayvon meant uh, having a Galaxy designated course, like a regular university course, right? Is that uh, that that at, yes. at least thinking back to my previous life, that might be a little more complicated because that has to do with a whole lot of bag of worms like core formal course proposals and how the course will fit in a into a specific program of study. And in, in general, tool specific uh, courses, at least in my university where I used to teach, were not uh, looked upon favorably. Uh, a more conceptual approach to the material was preferred because how do you fit uh, a course which is say, uh, learn this compiler or learn this particular tool to learn these so-and-so concepts. So that, uh, would be probably a challenge. Yeah, it has to be like a special topics course. Those are more flexible and less restrictive in terms of what you can teach. But if it has to be like one of these official for, for up to 400 level courses, that takes a couple of years even to get into the even, even, and all that. Yeah, even special topics, they would be usually language related, like uh, C++. Uh, that would be a special topic, so usually it would not even count, at least in my university, for a CS major, because it's too specific. This is something uh, you would assume majors can learn on their own.
So I have uh, one more to get back to this question. Um, it, would it be possible regarding the automation, automation, sorry, uh, of um, screencasts? Could we use the the tours, small tours, and automatically generate the record the videos for those, uh, produce them, and maybe even as a next step, automatically, if we an annotate the steps right automatically also add the audio for starters so purely automatically generated short tutorials from tours is that something which makes sense or is it feasible yeah i mean that's what i was thinking we could do um if for the annotate i mean we would have to annotate the tours a lot more than they currently are because we have just a little text that goes in the box we need one more explanation there um but that's not if we were if we were actually going to use these, then that'd be the way to do it. Um, I mean, this would be a really nice way to we could we could double dip and use this for testing as well, right? So if you had particular analysis that you had perfectly specced out and it all of a sudden didn't work, you know, you'd know something was going on. I like it. Really like it. I feel like we have many of the ingredients. It's kind of just um just <laughs> piecing together. I realize this is like years of work. <laughs> we could we could bite chunks off of it though. Um over yeah. the next over the next exactly. release or two. That's definitely the right approach, right? Let's uh let's make let's aspire towards it and then you know each quarter when we get a little bit further down the road. But it's crystal clear to me that this is like a set we gotta do this, right? Yeah. Because I think um that what I what I hope and think is like, you know, if you're just like running one or two tools, great. You know, that's uh, straightforward. But I like to think our Galaxy user base is getting more sophisticated over time, where the workflows are getting deeper and the types of operations they want to perform are just getting more sophisticated. So we got to. I, I really think we got to break it up into these little bite-sized nuggets. And it sounds like the tours is like exactly the right. Um, framework to get started on animating this automatically. Um, well, I, I didn't mean, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to blow up the whole conversation around this, <laughs> uh, but it's really uh, helpful to me. I mean, there's this, so there's sort of uh, the broader discussion about the GDSCN and sort of trying to support new users. You want to really like your idea, you know, if there are workflows like like ready to go on microbiome related activities, I think that would be of great interest. Um, you know, I, the network is, it, there's sometimes when we're trying to just, um, you know, give information, but a lot of it also is just sort of matchmaking. Um, and, you know, it, it can be intimidating to work in a new topic and a new um technology without you know someone to kind of guide you through it so uh, you know i also thank you all in advance um a few of my lab members have met some of the gdscm members and that's gone like spectacularly well you know people are just so appreciative for all the help and and support i think john uh, weren't you at like one of the recent dinners and it was just like uh you know it's just uh it's just it's just it's, you know it's just really meaningful and impactful to to do that sort of activity i think that's what we're all about Uh, I don't know. Does anyone else have any comments, thoughts about I don't know teaching or I don't know maybe new workflows that uh, are available or or new technologies under the hood that might be relevant that we should all be aware of. Okay. Well, I know we have this mortgage board coming up, and what were the final dates for that again? I think they're aiming for end of May, the week of the 22nd. Uh, I don't know if that's been finalized yet. Maybe maybe that would be a good target to um, take a, you know, take a half step down this path where we could create a few, um, you know, we'll, we'll start really modest. I don't know, three, five minute videos, you know, on some of the, maybe some of the newest features you know, we take a baby step down this path to get some hands-on experience on a, you know, something like that, I think could be a really good goal. Obviously, if we do more, that would be great. 
but I just feel like we're going to have to inc make incremental progress on this. Thanks for your note, uh, Marissa. Um, that, okay, thanks. That was everything I had to share. Natalie, is there anything else you wanted to go over today? No, I think that covers it. Um, thanks everybody for joining today's community call. The next one will be on uh, February 9th. Uh, so we're gonna have the release testing team share about uh, the outcomes of testing the 23.0 release. So thanks everybody for joining and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right, thank you. Bye.